Hey everyone, so in this video I have a confession to make. I've not been entirely truthful with some of what I've said about Azure AD. I always talk about, well, there's kind of my Active Directory that does Kerberos and NTLM, and then we have things like Azure AD that is modern authentication, like OpenID Connect, OIDC, maybe OAuth2, uh, WS Fed, SAML, and that it doesn't do Kerberos. And it's not entirely true. There are circumstances where really I am using Kerberos to authenticate to Azure AD. Now, I'm not talking about Azure AD domain services. That obviously enables Kerberos and NTLM because it creates managed domain controllers. I'm not talking about Azure AD app proxy that uses Kerberos constrained delegation after I've pre auth to Azure AD. That's not the same thing. I'm talking about, I'm actually here on a machine that's kind of on my corporate network connected to my domain controllers, my Active Directory. And when I go and authenticate to Azure AD, it's essentially using Kerberos. And that's what I want to dive into. And if this is interesting, if this is a bit of fun, please go ahead and give this a like, comment and subscribe. Now you're probably used to the idea of different ways to authenticate to Azure AD. We can think about, well, through Azure AD Connect, which was kind of the last little fun video I did that went into what's that link. If I send the password hash of my account, I can authenticate directly against Azure AD. And the authentication happens inside Azure AD because obviously it has my kind of user and that hash of the hash with all those different thousand SHA iterations. I can also authenticate, well, I can have pass through authentication agents here. So when I go to authenticate to Azure AD, it actually kind of writes a auth request to a queue per PTA agent. And then it goes and essentially gets that request. It's constantly looking at it. It does an auth against AD. And if it's good, says yes. So I've authenticated. And then, of course, says if I use Federation, so if I use Federation, I don't actually auth against Azure AD at all. When I try to authenticate, it will redirect me to my Federation server that does the authentication, gives me a SAML token that Azure AD will consume and let me in. And one of the interesting things is and why Federation was popular was because my authentication bounces back to these on-premises Federation servers if I'm already authenticated to my domain controllers, when I use federation, I would just get signed in. It was single sign-on because the authentication was happening against the same place. And ordinarily, for the password hash, so cloud or for password authentication, I don't get that. I'd have to go and actually type in my credentials to be able to authenticate. So that's where we have this whole idea of this kind of seamless sign-on. And it's the seamless sign-on where we actually use Kerberos to authenticate to Azure AD. We're not using password hash. We're not using password authentication. When I use seamless sign-on, I'm actually using Kerberos. So what, what do I mean? What, what magic is happening? So if you actually go and turn on seamless sign-on, so this is something I can do in Azure AD Connect what we'll actually see here is you can see if my user sign on looking at my Azure AD Connect under Azure AD, I have seamless sign on turned on. Now, what this does is when you turn this on in Azure AD Connect on my Active Directory, so if I actually jump over to my domain controller, it creates an account. Azure AD SSO account. So that represents my Azure AD instance within Active Directory. And what it also does is register a bunch of SPNs. So if I actually go over to here, if I do set SPN list for that account, see there's a whole bunch of these SPNs that are registered for that account. And the one I'm really interested in is this one, this auto login.microsoftazuread-sso.com. So I can think about, I have an account now in my AD that represents my Azure AD, 
And my Azure AD has kind of the secret, so it can decrypt any tokens that I use to actually authenticate against this. Okay, so, so what do I really do with this? What, what is happening behind the scenes? So let's actually be on an end machine. Now I can look at my Kerberos tickets. If I do K list, we can see I have a ticket for my Kerberos ticket granting ticket service on my domain, and I have an LDAP um, for my domain controller. But that, that's all I have. So what I'm going to do is actually go to a service. Now I'm going to go to myapps.microsoft.com. Now I'm going to add a domain hint. I'm going to tell it I'm SavileTech.net. Now if I don't do this, it will have to prompt me for what is my username. That's so we can work out which Azure AD am I actually from. But if we have the domain hints in our various links to SaaS services, watch what happens. Bounce around, but I'm signed in. I didn't get prompted for a credential. I didn't have to type anything. I am signed in. So that's what seamless sign on does. And that works because I'm in this scenario where I drew on the board that I'm on a AD join machine connected to environments that can talk to my domain controllers. And now when I go and access a resource that trusts that Azure AD, Again, with a domain hint, it doesn't even ask me for my username. Without the domain hint, it will say, well, who are you? Then it can get a cookie and remember. But it has to work out, well, which, which AD are you actually from? Which Azure AD tenant am I using? So it can work out, well, which account should it care about? And what's really happening behind the scenes is when I'm trying to access that authentication page, because it now knows what Azure AD tenant I'm from, and it knows I have seamless sign-on turned on, it actually challenges me. It gives me a 401 unauthorized response, which says, hey, uh, I want a Kerberos ticket. At this point, I go and talk to my domain controllers and say, look, I need a ticket for Azure AD SSO account, that computer account, because that's who Azure AD has said it is. So I then get that Kerberos ticket and I give that to Azure AD. And Azure AD, because it has the secret, can decrypt that and says, okay, yep, you must be who you say you are because you have this ticket from AD for me. That means you must have authenticated as that user to AD successfully. I'll now give you your access and refresh tokens. Now to allow it to get a ticket for Azure AD, it has to consider the URL, that SPN, part of my intranet. So the other thing I have to do to actually make this work is if I jump back over, if I was to actually look back at my domain controller, in addition to having this computer account, you have to go and create a group policy object. So here I created one called uh, seamless sign on GPO, and I link it at the root of my Active Directory. And I have one setting in there, well, actually I have two settings in there. But the one I care about is essentially under Windows Components, Internet Explorer, Internet Control Panel, Security Page, I am setting autologon.microsoftazuread-sso.com to Zone 1. And Zone 1 is intranet. So now all of my machines will consider that part of my intranet zone. It will not work if it's trusted. It has to be intranet. It will now consider that part of the intranet so it will allow it to use Kerberos with it. So remember that URL looks very familiar. Remember that was kind of one of the SPNs that we actually had here that was registered to the computer account in AD. So now as the user, okay, I've got access. If I go back now and look at my Kerberos tickets, I have a new one and look what my new one is server auto logon dot microsoft azure ad dash sso dot com the url we've allowed through our group policy and also the one we have one of those spns for that computer account so that's where we can really see all of that in action where it's now using that kerberos to authenticate now there's one other thing we we do have to do now obviously azure ad 
has the secret for that computer account. So we really want to kind of rotate it at least every 30 days. And it will tell you if you're kind of in an unhealthy state. So if we jump back over for a second, if I go and look at my Azure AD and actually click on seamless single sign-on, so again, we're, we're kind of down here. If I click on that, it tells me the last time I did my key creation day and my status is healthy, so it's happy. But again, I want to do this every 30 days, and we can actually just do that on the Azure AD Connect box. We can all go and check all these fun things. So here I can load in the various modules. It's going to make me sign in because I'm, I'm actually getting a context to my Azure AD to enable me to run these commands. And now I can get my single sign-on status. So I can say, yes, good. And now if I want to actually rotate the credential, I have to get a cred in a variable for my Active Directory. So this needs to be in the regular kind of uh, NetBIOS type format, my domain slash user. Type in my credential. Oh, didn't mean to type that. Type that again. So now it's in a credential. And I simply run this update Azure AD SSO forest command, which will now update that credential. So it's updated the secret, it's given it to Azure AD. So now Azure AD has that new secret. So now on kind of those future iterations, it can carry on using those. I don't have this old secret that maybe over time could be compromised in some way. And eventually it will kind of show it um, in my single sign on date as updated. Oh, there we can see. So if we go back over and look, we can see now as I just ran that command, we can now see, hey, the key creation date. So we can see that actually took effect and we have rotated the secret. But that's my big lie. Uh, I always say kind of Azure AD doesn't do Kerberos authentication. But when I do seamless sign-on, it's using Kerberos. Now, again, I'm not doing Kerberos against Azure AD directly. There's no kind of Kerberos auth happening up here. But I authenticate against my domain controller using Kerberos. Then Azure AD is using the ticket that I get to authenticate me, which is kind of part of Kerberos. So that's kind of that scenario where I actually am using Kerberos to authenticate directly um, with my Azure AD services. And so just a little bit of fun. Uh, I hope that was interesting. Until next time, stay safe.